Yeah. In five, four, three, two, one, and it's lit. And welcome back to another episode of Lit Podcast. And you know we back in season three, and we got something very special once again for y'all. Y'all gonna believe who we got in the building? Well, shit, y'all, y'all gonna believe this shit today. We got a little wheel in the motherfucking house. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? What's going down, Lil' Will? Man, cool, man. Man, cool. I already man, appreciate you coming out here showing love. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 I already. Yeah. I, <laughs> my bad, but yeah. shit. I, on this podcast right here, we uh we show homage, we show love. You know what I'm talking about? Then we get lit at the same time. So this is what this is all about. You know what I'm saying? We trying to get to know Lil' Will. You know what I'm talking about? So first of all, where you from? Oh uh, man, I'm originally from New Orleans, man. New Orleans, Louisiana. You know what I'm saying? But I've been in North Dallas shit since I was 10 years old, so right, right. I'm North Dallas. So I heard when you was, what, about 10, about 11 years, you came, to, you came to Dallas, you know what I'm saying? And then you stumped down, and then later on you moved to Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. So what it was like moving to Atlanta and hooking up with DJ, or what it, Tunk? Tunk, Tunk, Tunk ah, yeah. man, uh, that shit was crazy, man, shit. Um, it was just, it was something new for me, you know what I'm saying? Because I had never been around no nigga that, I knew, you know, a producer like that that I knew and just wanted to fuck with, it really fucked me up because I had already been on T.I. Music before even going there. So getting there and meeting Toomp and shit, he wanted to work with us and shit, you know what I'm saying? All right. Me and the homie had something going, that shit was real positive, real big to me. So what started, what, what started you know, I say it's real big to you, what started the passion for music? Shit, my mama. Okay, okay, my tell mama, me more you know about what that. Saying? Like, you know, I come from, well, the first day you come home, you finna hear some music, you finna hear some bounce, you finna hear, you gonna hear some jazz on the way to the motherfucking house, you finna hear some type of music. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, and then my mama, she always had an ear for everything. She listening to, she, everything from Anita Baker to Tupac. Right, so right. So, it wasn't no broad, you know what I'm saying, broad range, it was, everything was a broad horizon. You know what I'm saying? So that's just what it was. So what what So did it drive you to rap? Or was you what like what like what inspired you to rap? To rap. Uh Snoop. Snoop. Yep. That was oh, the okay. first CD. That was the first tape. I bought the tape. Mm. I ever bought. <laughs> what uh it wasn't, it was Doggy Style. Doggy Style, oh shit. One in one house. Man, what happened next after you bought that bounce, that Doggy Style? She, let, she went, matter of fact, I couldn't buy it. So I had to give her my $6, and she went to the store and bought me the tape. And came back, and I learned that bitch <laughs> from front to end. <laughs> yeah, that for real. And from there, she... We don't love them hoes. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I remember that. Well, say, bro. Well, I remember that. Well, it, 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 it had a whole fold out the whole of all the, you know what I'm saying? So the lyrics and just, shit. It's just she. From there, I was introduced to Pac, you know what I'm saying? Right. And I had the mother, because that shit, that, that drop was before uh, Me Against the World. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know what's so crazy about that story is that at that time, when Snoop dropped that album, don't you know that Mr. 3 2 and that boy Mike uh, from New, uh, New Orleans helped them with that? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? With that project. That's which is crazy. You know what I'm saying? So it had a New Orleans feel and a Texas feel. Right. And that Snoop uh, album, that dog yeah. style. That's crazy. See, that's one thing them niggas had. <coughs> a lot of niggas didn't know. Le J and Shug, them niggas were working together, man. Mm -hmm. Them niggas had. You know what I'm saying? That's how. <coughs> That's how niggas like motherfucking uh 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 young mouth get signed mm -hmm. to fucking rap line. line right now. You know what I'm saying? Niggas in the eighth signed to Death Row. Mm -hmm. and, you know, niggas from this lower region, man, even Louisiana, uh Houston, niggas from you know what I'm saying, from this area, they just was working it back and forth, mm -hmm. man. So mm -hmm. what was your what was your what was your first rap? My first, ooh. Yeah, what was your first rap? Like, when when did you, when you was in that mirror? I, I know, I remember mine. I ain't even gonna lie. I remember the first time, nigga, I put that tissue in that tape, nigga, and went in there, nigga. And nigga, I was stealing nigga shit like a motherfucker, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, nigga, my favorite nigga shit, you know, that that's how, that's how I became better, you know yeah. what I'm saying? See, I didn't, I know, the first time I ever just practiced was 
I was in elementary in New Orleans, and we had a talent show. And for the talent show, we did Dear Mama. Mm. Okay. And that was the first time I ever practiced in the mirror. Right. Get right. words right. I had me some dice set up. Yeah. So when he hit the uh, dice part, I threw my dice out. Throw the crowd went crazy. Real shit. <laughs> <laughs> he already had this show. Set yeah. Up. I already had my show together. Yeah. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? And then when I was in New Orleans, like nigga, every Friday we'll have some shit called sock hops. So. Every Friday, we got the hottest DJ in the city at our school, DJ Jubilee. And Ooh. he had our shit DJing. But well, that's a legend. For our parties. That, Real shit. Well, that's a legend. For, that's a legend in New Orleans. You know, like square business. Every weekend, man, that they used to be at McDonald 32. Uh, where I went out there DJing for our sock house. Man, like, how, what, was that, what was that feeling like? Nah, that shit was like... Motherfucking beyond measures itself. Right, right, right. Yeah, especially having this shit that you do release. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we 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 gonna start this shit off right. Hold up, hold up, nigga, hold up. Yeah, stay. Hold up. This nigga, the nigga. Right. He DJing at the school. I didn't want the talent show. Yeah, yeah. What's going yeah, down? That was, that was my. Down? That was my first motherfucking just ever practicing the verse I practiced. And from there, shit, that would make me want to go write my own shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, so you took it serious then yeah. after that. So yeah. when it was the first time you ever just got in that studio and just like, uh, and, and really just heard yourself, just like, hey man, I I, I I can do this. The first time I ever got in the studio um, was with one of the big homies. Um, me and my partner, bruh, we just rapping at the time, you know what I'm saying? But, <coughs> The old homie album was like, shit, man, y'all got something. Y'all, man, come let me record this song for y'all. And we go over there, we do the jam, we end up doing two songs, and we get the motherfucking tape, go to the crib. Like, four days later, we see this nigga Alvin again, he's selling tapes <laughs> of us. Oh, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, he already on it. Niggas shit. in the hood on our shit now, real shit. And they, but we, we young, bro. We probably like seventh, eighth grade. Right. You know what I'm saying? But niggas in the hood on our shit. And we ain't even know. Right. And we pulled in other places. Now they, hey, that motherfucking, that bitch, that's stupid. <laughs> we like, damn. You know what I'm saying? So, so great taste. So, <laughs> basically. Basically, that's how it was. That's how it always start off. So then you flip, um, switch over to the CDs right, and right. shit. God damn it. I remember doing beats with floppies and shit. Right. <laughs> like square yeah, business yeah. shit. Nigga, times done changed. So, like, was you was you growing up? Was you ever what, solo? Or was you ever part of a group? Uh, I had been a part of a few groups. Like, well, me and the homie Lil Bird, we was rapping together uh, when I moved to Atlanta. I moved to Atlanta after with Bert, so I moved to Atlanta and uh, me and my nigga Twan started a group. And from there, I ended up getting into some more trouble in Atlanta. My pop sent me back here and I uh, ended up linking with the Young Bangers, which was at the time was on the Rally Boys. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Shout out Rally Boys. Yeah. OG Rally. You know what I'm mm. saying? Uh, me, the homie Lil Chris Chicago. We had a group together, and um, some shit happened. Homie dispersed. The other little homie moved away, and uh, Pig situation had to went south too. Cottonmouth Jesse, little nephew. Right, Pig, Free Pig. You know yes, what I'm talking about? Free, free yeah, free, free Pig. Pig. You know what I'm saying? Village Oak. You know what I'm talking right about? Right there. Get it, get it. Clip like baby. So yeah, <laughs> so yeah, man. We uh. Cotton and Jizz and O'Reilly had got together and was like, shit, we just put Will and Pig together. So they put us together, called us Young Rally. Mm. We was probably five, six songs in, Pig catch the charge. Right. So from there, I just didn't have no other, I ain't had no other choice from there, you know what I'm saying? I just was like, fuck it. I just dropped the mixtape. I maybe used, I think, Pig on three of the jams. You know what I'm saying? Three of the jams me and P did together. I used them. I used them on a bit out of the six. You know what I'm saying? I used right. three of them. Uh, put them on the tape. Drop the tape. Bill Cobb, Bootleg Special. Uh, man, we flood them hoes. Flood them hoes. Flood them hoes. Flood them hoes. We get a call from G Rock. Mm -hmm. Look, I want to start doing units with y'all. <laughs> y'all out here. Y'all doing something. Woo woo. 
And shit, and from there, it was history. Shit, the next thing I was doing was dug in, busted open, and you know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah, we're gonna get, yeah, we're gonna touch on that. Yeah, we're gonna touch on that in a minute. You know, first of all, I want to, you know, I want, I, I want the people to get to know you. You know what I'm yeah. talking about? I want, you know, that, cause this, here we, like I say, we're giving your flowers while you're here. You know what I'm talking about? Appreciate that was the whole reason of the, you know, DJ Wire, her club situation, all yeah. that. It's like giving them flowers while it's here. You know, we don't support. Our people like we really supposed to out here. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? We get support, don't get it wrong. We fuck with our people, but sometimes that, that shit is very thin. So like, we trying to bring it back together. You know what I'm talking about? Um, who is Little Will? Even though that's your Instagram, you know what I'm talking about? But really, who is Little Will? Man, I'm... Shit, as of now, I'm a family man, man. I'm a uh, little league football coach. I'm a oh, goddamn, really? Oh, uh, really? You know what I'm saying? I'm a goddamn cheerleader, a uh, uh, volleyball cheerleader. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, really? Man. You know what I'm saying? Don't mind that, man. Just, you know, I'm just me. Right. But I'm still, you know, I still have my certain ways. So right. I'm just me. <sighs> I, I, it's hard to explain. Right, I know, I know what you're saying. Like shit, you know, he growing up being that, being that yeah. man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, time change. You know what I'm saying? But you know, we still, you know, one foot out, one foot. Exactly. Out, you know I just about? don't want to say too much. Right, 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 right. I already know. You know what I'm saying? Square business. You know what I'm talking about? So like, do you have any regrets? Uh, no. That's what's up. That's Not what's really, because every, every decision I made, I made in a, you know in a clear state and clear mind. So you know it's, it was all a learning experience. So now I know. Yeah, everything a learning experience. For real. Yeah. So how you from that learning experience? What led what led you to asylum? Man, it was just. Matter of fact, hold on, let me back that up, man. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> what led you to Rude Boy? Because you cause you, cause you and Rude Boy really started off, right, with the... Um, with Rally. Right, right. Yeah, mm -hmm. we started off. And shit, niggas still had other shit they were doing, you know what I'm saying? Cotton still was dropping. Right. So he wasn't really just trying to push the subject. Jizz was doing his own thing, you know what I'm saying? So that nigga Rude just was like, look, bro, fuck <coughs> it. I got you, nigga. <laughs> right. Nigga, we can do this shit ourselves, nigga. Look, I'm CEO, you CEO, boom, bam, bam, bam. We did the paperwork, sent it out, shit. We got the Rude Boy LLC. And from there, I just started dropping music, you know what I'm saying? Right. And shit, throughout that process, I, I dropped Dougie. Right. Uh, I let G-Rock hit G-Rock was like, uh, bro, that's a hit. I promise you. But at the time, uh, the homie Q had already been told me that, but Q, he the homie. You right. know what I'm saying? That nigga how to DJ in Dallas now. Yeah, it's Q. not, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but DJ at Q. the time, it's, that's the, nigga, we live together. See, we yeah. every day, so when he tell me how, I'm like, all right, bitch, that's just cause, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, but so did you feel that way when you did, Dougie? Mm -mm. I didn't. Cause I was always on some, like, if you check all the mm -hmm. young rally shit, all the shit a nigga did, you know what I'm saying? It was all on some G the, shit. The book, yeah, it was all on some G shit. Yeah. The team just came at me like shit. The bro, we need something for the club, food, whatever you gotta do, just make it trendy, make it for the club. That's what popping. So I do it, and that's what I came up with. Right. It was hot. Man, what was I in mean, your mind? Like, <coughs> can you take us there? I was high. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. I was, man, I used to always sit in front of the motherfucking computer and then I learned, look, I'm finna tell you some shit. I learned this shit from Doge. Shout out to Doge G. <laughs> the Doge, Doge used to come through and like, man, I bet we can't smoke this whole quarter pound. <laughs> so we just sit there rolling up smoking, listening to beats all night. But at the same time, Doge gonna poke with you. He gonna try to see where you get. And he just, but that's what he do to himself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He'll sit there, smoke a whole bunch of blunts, listen to beats, and just, only if he eight bars, he'll repeat that whole eight bars, that whole goddamn beat. You know what I'm saying? Until it's mounted in his brain. And then when he hear the next beat, he'll come up with another folk mm -hmm. and mount that whole, you know what I'm saying? I learned that from it. And then it's just, it's just repetitiveness and work in the brain. So I just did that shit. Sit there, smoke a blunt. 
You know what I'm saying? And shit. By the next morning, I had that help. Went to the studio with Big E. Dropped that because I had already been recording that E. Went fuck with E. Shout out Big E. Mm. Big E on the track. We did that shit with E. Like a week later, them niggas were like, bro, we gotta have another song. Went to E. We're like, bro, I want this sample. He pulled the sample. He was like, shit, how you want that hoe to sound? I was like, bro, put this, boom. Boom. Gave him a stupid ass bass, and from there, he took everything else. Well, so he got you some Cause I had I already wrote, yeah, I had mm -hmm. I already wrote the bitch before. Before hey, I just, I came in there with the verses, laid the verses, and then bro build a random album. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it is. Yeah. And oh. shouts out to E, man. Speaking of E, we doing that same motherfucking shit right now. So we got something good for y'all. I mean, real mm -hmm. shit. So, Already. like, what was the, so, cause that, that it took off. Like, when, when, when you know, Bust it dropped, you know, we had Bust it, <laughs> and you had um, Dougie. You know what I'm saying? They came out really back to back down there. You know, how did what 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 was it like getting Dougie Fresh down here to even embrace embrace the whole? Ah oh, man, that was crazy. That was a major moment for me because, like I like I was saying earlier, my mama was listening to Dougie Fresh. Right. So I'm on this nigga as a kid, him and right. Sweet Rick. So as I'm old and I mean this nigga Shay, this nigga came down here and showed out, bro. Mm -hmm. His sons reached out to me. Yeah, mm -hmm. Big up the day. Yeah, you man. Shout out to Dougie Fresh, man. Yeah, Coming down yeah, just showing yeah. love, just yeah, like, you yeah. know what I'm saying, for real. We yeah. had not already been, we had already been done working, working that motherfucker this time. And this was before we even, uh, this was maybe a couple weeks before we had even signed. Mm -hmm. We, uh. What's up? Yeah, just before we signed with Asylum. We get a call, mm -hmm. and I'm on the phone. He's like, yeah, bro, we uh, you know, we go to college up here. We had been on your shit, and I think our uh, our pops want to fuck with it. I'm like, who your pop? <laughs> and he was like, Dougie Fresh. I was like, for real? He was like, yeah, I'm finna link y'all in. Clicked over, and it was Dougie Fresh. <laughs> I was like, bro, whatever you need, flights, whatever flight you flight. Hotel, <laughs> she, you I come down you. here and do the film, I got you. And how much, because he didn't want to charge me. Right. He was like, I appreciate you for paying how much putting these kids up on me. Woo, woo, woo. You know what I'm saying? He didn't want to charge me. So I'm like, shit, whatever y'all need him and our three sons, we like, whatever y'all need, we got y'all. Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, that, and he came down and showed major love and been showing love ever since. Yeah. Who shot the video? Man, was, was that, that was, King King was Solemn. Oh, that was Solemn? Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Mm. I thought that was King Bird. Uh, King Bird shot the little man joint. Me, little man, fat pimp. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay, mm -hmm. okay. That's what's up. So, did you even, did you even recognize how big the song was? Uh, Cause you know a lot of people don't. Yeah, cause a lot of people don't be recognizing how big a song really is. Cause I you, cause you go what you what you uh top number three on the Billboard. Yeah, I was in the top. I hit top five. Mm -hmm. And then the. Uh, Bust it open here, top fit, top twenty five. Top twenty five. Yeah. Boom, bow. Like, <laughs> like, a lot of people, you know, it, it's for a lot of people just for just coming out with even just fifteen albums don't even get that type of you know recognition or that type of success. Like, did you did they even stick in once you realized you was on the billboards and then like you know. You got people in California even saying like shit. They don't even shit. That shit, I ain't gonna lie. Shout out to the people in California that remade it, but it just it was just too it was just too happy. <laughs> it was just too happy. You know what I'm saying? It was just, it was just too happy. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like the you know the, the nit grit. You know what I'm saying? That that came from the soil. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But what was that like? You know what I'm saying? Even saying like all oh, these people from Cali even on it. That's that's probably really when I just paid attention like that. Cause before then, I really didn't. I just was sipping a whole lot of syrup <laughs> and traveling, bro. <laughs> right, right. I ain't gonna lie, bro. <clears throat> Not until like around, cause around that time when they redid it, a lot of people in Cali started reaching out. You know what I'm saying? Right. <coughs> so I fly down. Uh, 
shoot the video with the little niggas, and then after that, get a car, the Christian daughter, got a show down there for them, then get a car, then get a, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it was, it kind of just, that's when I really just was like, damn, okay. It's all in, nigga, what I thought, cause, you, know what like, you know? And then at, at that time, that's when he was, he had called me like, yeah, man, they got their remix. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. God damn, man, you say, man, we need to, you know, and that's when it really just clicked in to mm -hmm. Right, to keep going. Yeah. So, you had, that was, that, was your, that was your main album right there, right? Yeah. Okay, and then after that, you dropped more mixtapes. Mm -hmm. So why, uh, what, what was the process of not, uh, coming out with another album? Man, me and the label was at odds at the time. Because through the situation with Rude, it was a clause in there that they couldn't disclose the books without all of us being present. Right. But due to his situation, shit, he finna be gone for 10 to 20 years. You know what I mean? The fuck is you talking about? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this nigga gone, but they stuck on this shit. So I was like, fuck y'all. I ain't dropping no more work through y'all. And he kind of just went like that. That's why I look. That's why you just, just like, just this, just went solo, just disappeared. Cause I know, I know, you was doing your thing. You was around everywhere. Cause you know what I'm saying, like, uh, and then the one next thing you know, we shit. But like, where will you know what I'm saying? I remember I had uh, no bullshit. This true story. I had cause I was looking for will like a motherfucker, and uh, I couldn't find him. You could not find will, <laughs> and so I'm, you know, I'm paying homage to everybody. So I'm thinking that this one nigga is Will on Instagram, right? <laughs> and I tagged this nigga in the motherfucking post, right? <laughs> then, the, then this Will came back, but like, shit, nah, nah, that's me right there. He was like, shit, hell, we got the wrong. I had him, I got him confused, for it, basically, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I had to let the record, uh, let uh, straight, uh, let the record straight, like, hey, my nigga, you know what I'm saying? It was hard finding Will. Will done disappeared and shit. Then it came back on the scene, like, Black man, here I go, shit, like, damn, you know what I'm saying? But like. What was it like? What was it like leaving asylum? Was it all about the money issue? Was it a, a contractual issue? Was it like just like, hey, like fuck music all the way around with this too? Nah, hell nah. Oh, okay. Cause I still was creating music and doing music. You know what I'm saying? Throughout the line, I just wasn't dropping shit through them. Right. So everything that I was doing at the time while under contract, it had to be. Done through this person, done through that person. Oh, right, done, right, right. You know what I'm saying? So, right. That's, that's basically really like fucking ride that bitch out. Shit. Yup. Yeah, ride that bitch out. Shit. Either to the bank. You go for the bank. <laughs> or shit. Fuck y'all. For real. So, what's some things you wish you would have known before you even started your career? <coughs> How much money I really was finna see. Right. See, we was, we was working through that transition where it was coming from out of the trunk onto the internet. Right, mm -hmm. like we all do. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like we all do. <coughs> we was yeah. going through that transition. And if I would've just known the shit, you can hold your horse, give yourself another year, you'll be stupid, stupid, stupid rich. And then wait, that was the only thing. We was young niggas. We was already getting money though. Right. So it wasn't like we were broke and right. we was, Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how it is. You know, Texas, that's one thing about being out here in the South, period. We'll be self-made. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody, we, we ain't got boxes. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, we, shit, if nigga ain't got it, nigga finna go get it. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's one thing that got fucked up about us. You know what I'm saying? Like, who, who's the, like, like the main three people that were, uh, like, the most influential in your life? Most influential? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm, so, I'm country. Yeah, I'm yeah. living in <laughs> Who are the three most influential? Hey, I'm country shit. It would have to be inspirations. Dougie Fresh. Oh, man, shout out Dougie Fresh. My nigga Pookie, Mr. Pookie. Shout out Pookie, man. You know, Pookie! Pookie! <laughs> <Teddy Pookie. laughs> That's my boy Pookie, man. I see his son, his son out there rapping too. Yeah. Man, you know what I'm saying? <coughs> Just did a show the other week. God damn. <laughs> Shit. Well, everybody got a. I swallowed some weed. Look, I was trying to grab that hoe. 
Play my butt told you, boy, that OG, that OG hit hard. Wind down now. <laughs> goddamn, I told you niggas stay lit on this bitch, nigga, goddamn me. Man, For real. Say. Appreciate that shit. Why? Goddamn yeah. me, shit. That motherfucker walk, man, that fucking weed, nigga going to nigga throw this over with. Then you trying to choke to it at the same time? <laughs> Hell nah, shit. Yeah, yeah. But, Mr. Pookie, and shit, man, my third most influential. It would have to be Jizz No Rally. Jizz No Rally, man, shout out, man. You know you know what, man, I'm, I'm glad you said that, man. You know what I'm saying? First of all, I want to ask why. <laughs> and before I ask why, I just want to give respect to, you know, Rally Boys, yeah, you know, Cottonmouth yeah. and all that. Cause, you know, they really don't get their flowers like they, <coughs> like they deserve because mm -hmm. they've been around. A lot of people don't know Cottonmouth never been around since the 80s, nigga. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Remember, like, nigga, real I remember nigga the shit. Rally Boys yeah, doing that. Uh, they getting real money, man. Right. Niggas was, yeah. Yeah. Them niggas were paying nigga for speeches <coughs> from Cash Money back then and Zap. You know, got our league. Oh yeah, Zap, yeah, yeah the show. Shit, bro. Shit. Bro. <laughs> Everybody, bro, they man they they were they, 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 they were doing it. <laughs> like for real, it's like shit. And they be around a lot of especially a lot of people in the north, you know, the clear. Cotton might be cotton might be there. Everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah, shit. So why? You know, tell me why them they, them three. Uh, it's just the way the game, you know, the game motherfuckers told me without having to tell me. Right. You know, it was a lot of shit Dougie Fresh put me on that he didn't have to let me in on. Right. He had to tell me shit. Just be like, thank you, little nigga, and <laughs> Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And Pookie just always guided me, you know what I'm saying? He always felt like shit. That's a little broke, because I was around, you know what I'm saying? The people he was close to. As a kid, though, so me coming up, he kind of was like, yeah, the bro did, you know what I'm saying, because he been around the nigga. That's why I say Mr. Pookie and Jizz, and with Jizz, it's the same way. You know what I'm saying? Like I had told you, it was, it was young Randy, you know what I'm saying? And nigga Jizz had to load it up and became my role manager after some shit happened where the other one had went to jail and, it just, you know what I'm right, saying? Right, but right, right, right. Yeah, I know the situation. Bro dropped the situation with that right. shit, I feel. I got your little bro, boom, and boom, boom, and just jumped in, you know what I'm saying? Didn't have to. The nigga already heard, stupid, you know what I'm saying? So, it just, it was a lot of shit. Man, what, man, what, man, what advice would you give someone trying to, you know, pursue? You know what I'm saying? The same career you pursue. Shit, just stay persistent. Like everything, man, you stay down until you come up. You gotta work. Right. You gotta work. Right. So that's, that's it. If you work at it, you can only get better. You can't go, you know. So you can only get better, so stay persistent. Stay consistent and persistent. Where well, you see yourself five years from now? Man. Five years from now, I see the wheel. Back shit, representing the D how it's supposed to be. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's been a lot of mishaps, a lot of other shit, but you know, I fuck with them from everywhere. Like I, like right. you were saying, the rally now, they now South East, West Cliff, West Dallas, you know, you know. So right. we I'm finna show a nigga. Right. I connect this shit. Make this shit work. Connect the dots around it something big. Right. Now for real, for real. Powerhouse, that's where we at, <coughs> In the next five years. Watch. Okay, I wanna know. Uh, the show, like, what was the what, what was the biggest show you done ever did, and you just felt the impact from it, and you just knew everybody just like, damn, y'all really know my motherfucking shit. Uh, I ain't gonna lie, we did that. Uh, we did the up close and personal when they were here in Dallas, and uh. We had came out with Soldier Boy on the remix and shit. Mm -hmm. And the whole stadium went nuts and was singing that hoe. And that hoe had like 70,000 in attendance. Mm -hmm. That's when I was like, oh shit, 70, okay. 70,000 in attendance. And they were rapping that hoe. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, stupid. It was so crazy to work. After, uh, cause that was the last song he had did. So after that hoe, we lead the stage. 
Spain them thinking they can steal him, A Rap, and fucking uh Sean Kingston. Spain. Mama them Spain. niggas Yeah, them niggas ride the goddamn me. That's when the little stand up mo pigs was in. You know oh what yeah, yeah. They yeah. ride them hoes through the crowd, bro, and call some whole other shit up in that hoe. But that hoe, that was that was real stupid. <laughs> so it was also oh, when y'all at the show, they riding up through that bitch with that hoe. Huh? Yeah, man, them people got the brain and jumping at them niggas and shit. That shit was crazy. What's how it is when you bring the nigga from the hood? Yeah, that was a crazy. Show. <laughs> then from there, well, that like, family got to bring them. Yeah. Then we were doing, we did the Battle of the Bands tour. Man, what's that Battle of the Band tour like? Man, that motherfucker, that was stupid. Cause that's all college. Them, yeah. yeah, them stadiums oh. be dumb. Oh. For real. Man. All through Alabama and shit. And man, you going out there fucking around at them cop Mississippi. Shit, so they playing your songs in the band now. That's what I'm saying. We haven't been out. <laughs> 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 yeah, you go in the band, nigga. You would've heard some Dougie, nigga. You were like, damn, shit, all right. That's what's up. <coughs> so, <coughs> now, what's your, man, what's your, man, what's your top three weed strands? Ooh, I like, uh, Dosey Dope. Mm -hmm. Uh, I ain't heard nobody say that one in a minute, Dosey Dope. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. a okay. Dosey Dope. I see, I like. Skunk, I like you know what I'm saying. Yeah, so that's skunk. Dope. Ooh, uh, he, headband. You, you see how he went back? He said skunk. You know, ain't nobody. But yeah, the skunk boy. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, man. that shit and some real. I don't know. I like some real chronic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Man, say. So. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you know. Yeah, he said a lot of niggas ain't been outside of Oak Cliff. It's a lot of niggas ain't been outside of North Dallas. It's a lot of niggas ain't <laughs> been outside of Texas. So you know. So I know y'all. Talk about say that chronic. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That's a different breed than what you smoking on that motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, shit yeah, do yeah, no yeah, draw, no name. Yeah. This bitch lime green, sticky, and blow your brain. <laughs> no sticks, no seeds, that shit you don't need. Hey, for real. For real. You got no medication. So, okay, now on here on Lit Podcast, we always ask, okay, what's your, um, what type, what, what, I mean, what, what you listen to the vibe out to, man? What type of music you be on? Man, lately, I've been listening to that little nigga Brazy. Okay. Which which Brazy though? Honeycomb Brazy. Okay, Honeycomb Brazy. Okay, I, I got you. Got to define that because oh, you know yeah, it's a lot yeah. of Brazy now. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've been listening to that nigga Spotted. Okay. And I still just file back. I got see. I be filing back. I got it. It's gonna have to be some UGK through my me throughout my day. Some A Pile, <laughs> MJG. It's finna. That's finna. That's through my daily mix. Right, right, right. right. You know what I'm saying? So I can't even say a top three. <laughs> Bro, if you go through my shit, you'll be like, damn, this nigga here. Fuck this nigga got Tennessee whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> I know a Tennessee give, whiskey. Give, no, give, him, give him three jobs. Give him three jobs. You know what I'm saying? Nah, I'm finna give it to him. I need, I need, I need your top three rappers that you gonna put in all time when you jump in that jump in that truck no matter where you going, I gotta I gotta wake up to this, this what's up, and then I need since you listen to that Tennessee, you like them blues, give me your all three blues. Give me my all three blues? Uh-huh. Ooh, that might be a hard motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. My do do do. <laughs> oh, it's the time. No, 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 Gladys, I like Aretha. I don't even know if you would consider Aretha a blues singer. Man, I mean hell. Or Patty. Mm -hmm. So that's so. I mean so that's rhythm and blues shit. Yeah. I mean R and B is rhythm and blues. Okay. I mean they just I don't mean shit. Hell, right, blues right, still got right. rhythm to me. You right R and B. I mean, we can't take away from our people genre anyway. We all love it anyway. Yeah, so yeah, to be honest with you. So, so I'm 
I'm a bro. I'm a avid. I listen to. You gonna hear Anita Baker thrown in my shit. Regina Bell. Regina Bell. Mm. You gonna hear. Boy, that nigga ass in the business next to that nigga fighting for us. Real. She's been hurt. Yeah. I live throughout my life. I ain't bullshit. Nah, that's where a business, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Okay, so we ain't so he we ain't really getting no top three on her today, so uh, yeah, it's but, hard, man. But my, it's hard. My range be wide, bro. You will see guys that nah. me. Mini Ripperton right here in CeeLo Green. I'm, I listen they to love it all. Nah, there ain't nothing wrong with it. That's, I like that. I like that answer. Yeah, yeah. I like that answer. You yeah. can't. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, don't box me in, my nigga. I'm uh, straight like that. Nah, for real, for real. So. All right, so I, I need to fuck up at I need to fuck the weed story, like man, one of the weed stories, mm -hmm. man. That where one day, you that know, one day, one night, that one night, one time, or that yeah. one time, mm -hmm. or that shit, you know. Cause I had, I know, I'm gonna tell you before you tell me that story, cause this is one nigga I ain't gonna know. I ain't gonna put your name out there, but I'm gonna tell your weed story, my nigga. Cause that shit fun in a bitch, my nigga. This nigga fell asleep in the nook nook, nigga. This nigga talking about. Nigga, all on top of her, nigga, nigga, hide the bitch, nigga, and just, I'm talking about in the nigga, oh, like swimwear, nigga, and just sleep, nigga, I was like, God damn, but I ain't gonna say your name, though, nigga, but you know what I'm talking about, <laughs> that shit crazy, boy, damn, ooh, we couldn't do I that had one. A few, uh, man, I remember one time we was here in Dallas, and, uh, I had a show at Blue with Jeezy. I had just started popping, and uh, Doski, Doski was dropping in, and Doski had a song called uh, Who Smoking That Bullshit? I Smell It, I yeah. Smell It. Yeah. So we in the uh, we in the VIP. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We out smoking that gas. <laughs> One of the little homies come through with a blunt of corn. Mm -hmm. Now my partner, a dumb nigga, food. He he the one who the little nigga passed the blunt to. This nigga hit the little homie blunt and yell out, "Who smokes that bullshit?" <laughs> and everybody know. in the section finished the rest of the hoe. You know what I'm saying? I, I smell, smell it. it. I, I smell, smell it. it. He chumped that nigga blunt across the club. <laughs> <laughs> I say, "Ah man, this nigga here dumb." <laughs> <laughs> Get a little homie with blood, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He threw this man shit across the way. <laughs> His people, bro, this whole pack. Jesus finna be hurt. But this nigga a big ass black nigga fool mouthful of gold. He jumped that bitch. <laughs> I said, oh, this nigga idiot, fool. <laughs> This is disrespectful, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah that, nigga, that nigga got the garbage, nigga. That nigga had to thump that hoe like a cigarette, yeah. nigga. nigga. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga shit, I smell it. Yeah. That nigga shit gone now, yeah. nigga shit. Oh, this ain't the same shit, shit. I mean. <laughs> but, that so, was, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. that, that I always sad. ask this question. The other night I fucked it up because I was high as hell. So I'm gonna try it again on this episode with Lil Will, you know what I'm saying? Hey, I gotta excuse me, my nigga. I'm country as fuck. I ain't gonna lie to you. But I don't give a goddamn fuck shit, you know what I'm saying? Y'all my nigga from Louisiana be talking about I ain't did you nothing. I be like, huh? Down there on me, huh? I ain't did you nothing. I'm like, what, <laughs> nigga? But shit, I love y'all niggas, man, for real. I love Lil Will shit. I love what you got going on, man. I wanna just say that for real, that you know, we, we respect everything that you do, you know what I'm saying? I, man, like, like I say, man, we appreciate you even even touching down. We appreciate the music that you brought us. Like I say, man, we like I say, we can't wait till you bring that shit back like two times. But my question is, if you was in my shoes, is there a question that you would ask yourself that I didn't? Oh, oh, nigga, oh, I nigga, see how nigga, hard nigga, you was nigga, 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 so what life mean to you? Shit, 
life is living. Right. For real. Everything you got going on right yeah. now. For real, my nigga. Life for real. living. Already. Doing it. Already. You know what I'm talking about? So, before we get out of here, man, is there any shout outs? Anything you want to tell anybody? You know what I'm saying? T tell people where they can reach you. I mean, the flow is yours. You know what I'm yeah, saying? You know what? Y'all can reach the homie man at lewill.com. L I L W I L.com. That's what it is. Got a link to everything going on with me. Shout out to the homies, like I said before OG Rally, Noski G, Mr. Pookie. Y'all know what it is. You know what I'm saying? The home team, man. Shout out to Shit Dallas. Straight like that. Man, shout out mm. to the whole Triple D. Y'all already know what it is. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We do this all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I say, don't look at the message. Pay, pay attention to the message. That's all I tell y'all. One thing I also tell y'all is that no matter what you're doing in your, in your life, man, just keep going, my nigga. Just keep striving. Don't stop. Don't look back. Keep going. You know what I'm saying? Another thing, you know, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, you know what I'm talking about? Bro. And I don't need no motherfucking donations because, you know what I'm saying, I'm going to get it myself. And another thing, if you need some fucking uh, her, some eyelashes, you need some motherfucking me, some motherfucking yeah. some, some, some get up, some dress, you need some shoes, you know what I'm saying, hit up the shantayway.com, you know what I'm saying, and use the promo code LIT, you know what I'm talking about? Also, you know, free my nigga gun of measy. Also, get that uh, uh, book, you know what I'm saying, from my homegirl, Kara Sadler, you know I'm talking about link is gonna be in the description. Shout out to my boy Cuddy. His book is out too. That link is gonna be in the motherfucking description. Shout out to the uh uh what tribal flower farms, you know yeah. what I'm saying, for that good ooh weed that we got today. And then also shout out to Moon Harvest, which you can get that C B D A, you know what I'm saying? That's uh drink, you know what I'm saying? Put it in your serve, you know what I'm saying, do it however you want it, you know what I'm saying? Up just like it is. Yeah, pour it, it up is, like it is. It you know what I'm talking about. Uh, everybody, if you ain't already, please roll up another blunt, get high with me, but I gotta go right now, bitch. Bye, bitch. <laughs>